Assalamualaikum to all the people watching this video and Eid Mubarak folks now as you can see by the title this is going to be a review video of a recent debate that Daniel Akikacho had with Jawad D. Hashmi now I think it's pretty obvious who won here but I'm just gonna say it this was by far one of the most easiest victories in favor of Daniel Akikacho now throughout this whole video I'm basically going to be proving how Jawad lost and Daniel won but first, let's go over Jawad's hypocritical side. Let's first see how much of a hypocrite this individual really is. Mockery. Shame on both of you. Okay. Did both of you make fun of apostate prophet? I thought it was just Daniel. That... <laughs> did did you I've too, never... Jawad? <laughs> oh, if I did... apostate prophet. I don't think I did, but if I did, I, it was accidental. I didn't. I would never call him. I think they call him Apus or something. I don't believe in doing that at all. So if that was the case, I apologize. I meant to call him AP. I, that's what I thought I called him. He's got Cause thick Because using, using nicknames like that is un So oh, I yeah. apologize if that was the case. Now, as you guys saw, Jawad refuses to call nicknames to Apostate Prophet. For those who don't know, Apostate Prophet is a kafir and an apostate who has insulted the religion of Islam in the most vile words and Jawad says that calling someone like that nicknames is quote unquote un -Quranic. Now just watch what he says to one of Daniel's fans who is a Muslim. Yeah, this is all bad. These are his fans in cells who love to use these kind of words. For those who don't know, an incel is a member of an online community who considers himself unable to attract women sexually. So let me get this straight. This individual, Jawad, refuses to call any nicknames to apostates and kafirs, but he has no issue with calling a Muslim an incel. This is clearly a sign of a hypocrite. Now, one of the signs of a hypocrite is someone who attacks Muslims but defends the Kafirs. And this is exactly what Jawad is doing in these clips. He treats Apos like he's some respectable individual, but then when it comes to his fellow Muslims, he calls them incels. To add more to his hypocrisy, he also said this. Ad hominem attacks as is standard of this type of people. I mean, we're in a debate of intellect, like even whatever we may have had before, this is the time to be decent. This is the time to talk to your interlocutor with a decent level of minimal decency. So according to Jawad, calling someone an incel is decent. Now that we've established how much of a hypocrite he is, let's now discuss on how he lost the debate. Now, throughout the whole debate, all he was doing was gish galloping. For those who don't know, gish galloping is a rhetorical technique which is used to overwhelm the opponent by providing an excessive number of arguments with no regard for the accuracy or strength of those specific arguments. We can see throughout the whole debate that Jawad was presenting arguments and he couldn't even back those arguments up with proper historical sources. Whereas Daniel, on the other hand, for every single argument he made, he cited actual historical sources for them to back those arguments up. And we can see throughout the whole debate, Jawad relied on the Surah 4 verse 25 argument. Now watch this clip. This up so we can there look we at it very carefully. All right, let's see the textual gymnastics of me just reading the verse. Mm -hmm. Marry the believing young women among those whom your right hand possess. So wed them by the permission of their people. If, if you miss the first part, whoever Where's, does not yeah. have the mean. Now we can clearly see that Jawad intentionally missed the first part out. And the reason he did this is so that the verse fits in the context which he wants it to fit in. This just shows that Jawad doesn't actually care about the verses or the Quran. He only cares about winning this debate, which he clearly lost. Another thing that I wanted to address was 
the, the topics of this debate were very clear but for some reason Javad keep changing the topics and even though Daniel kept reminding him of, of what the topics were he still tried to change the topics like for some reason now here's a clip of Daniel explaining to Javad of what the topics were originally with the exact topics that we agreed to in advance, religious freedom, patriarchy, gender norms, restrictions on sexuality, conquest, slavery, sex with female slaves. Now here in this next clip, you can see Javad trying to limit the debate topics for some reason. The four specific arguments for Daniel to refute will be on sexuality, that the Quran mandates that sexual intercourse can only take place within a marriage contract or a nikah. On religious freedom, the Quran allows the freedom to choose or leave a religion, and apostasy laws are therefore anti-Quranic. On warfare, the Quran categorically forbids wars of aggression. On slavery, the Quran does not allow the enslaving of prisoners of war. So this is he. This is what he wants to debate. These weren't the debate topic. The only thing that was on the debate topic is number three. The Quran categorically forbids wars of aggression. But on sexuality, like he's limiting the debate. The debate was about patriarchy and gender roles. And then limitations on consensual sex. Like there's a, it's illegal to commit zina it's illegal yeah. to commit adultery homosexuality like that's what the debate is on but he wants to limit it to only oh sexual intercourse can only take place within a marriage contract that's mm -hmm. not the debate topic that's like at most uh, like a, a sliver of the overall debate like, like, like a photo like now let's check what we have covered so far one we now know jawad is a hypocrite two he didn't provide any actual historical sources to back his arguments. And three, he tried to change the debate topics multiple times throughout the whole debate. I don't know, but right now it doesn't seem like Javad is anywhere near to winning this debate at all. Now let's look at Daniel's side. Daniel throughout the whole debate stick to the original topics and didn't change them unlike Javad of course. He also brought up actual historical sources to back his arguments up. And lastly, just to finish this off, Javad also committed a misuse of fallacy. He was continuously saying that Daniel was doing ad hominem attacks on him. When throughout the whole debate, he didn't even insult Javad once. All he did was call him a murtad. Which is true because Javad is someone who openly rejects the Hadith and the teachings of the companions of Muhammad peace be upon him. He is someone who has sold himself out to modern day secularism and liberalism. So I don't think any Muslim should even consider Javad as a Muslim. Anyways yeah guys these are the reasons why I believe Daniel won this debate. Now, keep in mind that this video could have been way longer and I would prove a lot more on how Daniel won. But right now, I really don't have the time and I think I've covered most of the things which are necessary to prove how Daniel won. So yeah guys, that was it for this review and until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.